So what is uh, one's fracture risk assessment and what do we have available to do that? Okay, the, the fracture risk assessment really was, um, came out as a response to the 94 uh, guidelines presented by WHO based upon T-scores to, to get at a, a more accurate assessment of fracture risk, much the way that physicians will use a variety of factors to, to evaluate cardiovascular risk. And so uh, the first one that came out was the uh, FRAX calculator, which came from John Canis and others helping him at University of Sheffield. And then shortly thereafter was the fracture risk calculator, which came out from Bruce Ettinger as part of ABH. Both of these look at a variety of risk factors for fracture, and they both are designed to calculate one's 10-year risk of getting an osteoporotic fracture. And both of them look at it in, in two different flavors, your 10-year risk of getting a major fracture, which would be a fracture of the wrist, the humerus, the pelvis, the spine, the, 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 the hip, uh, the tibia, which is the top number. And the bottom number is very specifically just one of those fractures, the most important and dangerous fracture, which is a hip fracture. So if you get this when you're 60, your 10-year risk would be by the time you're 70, you'll have a 10% risk of getting a major fracture and a 1.2% chance of getting a hip fracture. Now, there's several important things to know about the score you get from these. First of all, um, for the top number, your 10-year risk of getting a major osteoporotic fracture, it's customary to view a 20% greater, 20 or greater risk of fracture, which is a one in five risk of getting an osteoporotic fracture or greater as being a high risk. And that tends to resonate with patients. If I tell a patient, if you don't do anything, you've got a one in five chance, 20% or greater, of getting a, a major osteoporotic fracture over the next 10 years. To most of my patients, that's a high enough risk worthwhile to treat. At many, many DEXA centers and to many physicians, the bottom number, the 10-year risk of getting a hip fracture, 3% is considered high risk. Now, there's a couple of things that are important to know about this 3% threshold. First of all, to most patients, being told you have a 3% chance of getting a hip fracture over 10 years, which is identical to saying over the next 10 years, you've got a 97% chance of not having a hip fracture is, does not really resonate as a high risk to them. And the reason for this is because this was never meant to be a high risk level. The 3% figure for a 10 year risk of hip fracture comes from two studies done by Anatostasin, which were cost effectiveness studies in Canada and in the US. And she made the assumption, if you've got availability of generic Fosamax, alendronate that's really, really inexpensive, and if you assume three years treatment with alendronate will only reduce hip fractures by 30%, and in the studies it was actually 50%, which is 30%. At this cost and that protective level, at what level is it worthwhile as a cost effective to treat everybody and at a 3% 10-year risk of hip fracture in, the, in Canada, the US, it was cost-effective to use this to treat everybody. So 3% is actually a cost-effectiveness level. Experts like myself, I use 20% or greater for the top figure of the FRAX calculator, FRC, of getting a major fracture or at least a 10% risk of hip fracture as being high risk. Other thing to know about this risk is that it should be reduced if, there's, if a patient has been on effective therapy. So if a patient's been treated, because the fracture calculator assumes whatever your femoral neck BMD is when you put it down, if you're 75, that you've been losing bone mass steadily for at least 25 years to get to that level. If you've been on therapy and your BMD has gone up for a period of time on therapy or has been stable, then it, it actually, the fracture will overestimate your fracture risk. But if you're an untreated woman, the fracture or, or man, the fracture calculator is probably a more accurate way of assessing your true fracture risk than is simply a T-score based upon a single DEXA.